Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we have a four way antenna switch, which is spec to support from 1.8 megahertz up to 60 megahertz. And that's essentially the 160 meter handband up to the six meter handband. Now it's also spec to handle up to 500 watts PEP, and that's with a cost of around $50. It also comes in this metal case. Now the box appears to be not waterproof, as far as I can tell, and each of the connections are SO239, pretty much what we would expect to see on an RF device covering the supported frequencies. Now the center SO239 is where you connect your transceiver, and the outer four SO239 sockets can be used to connect your antennas. Now what you will also notice is there's a cable grommet at the bottom, and with the text printed just above it on the metal case saying control cable, well, you'll be correct in thinking that there's actually a control box to control which antenna is selected. Now I've seen various versions of this board on those online selling sites, and it consists of four high power relays, which basically switch the center port to one of the other antenna ports. There's a green connection block where we attach the wires that go off to the controller, now this is what the controller looks like. Now I didn't get any control cable with this kit and it appears the rest of the control box is actually missing. However, I think this was actually done intentionally so that the user can fix this into their own custom box. Now, in fact, I've also seen this type of product, including the main relay board come as a complete kit. So this is one of those ones which is fully built for you. There's no soldering involved here. Now the control PCB has four indicator LEDs which illuminate depending on which antenna port is selected. That rotary control that you can see on that panel is four ways, i.e. so for each of the four antennas. Again, this PCB has a block connector to attach your wires. Now this actually has six connections, but I only ended up using five of them. There's one ground and the other four are 12 volt control lines which power the selected relay. Now there's also a barrel type socket, which is used to feed your 12 volt DC supply into it. Again, this did not come with the kit, but I just used my shack power supply for testing. Now incidentally, I did not get any instructions with my kit, but they are available on the internet if you do a little bit of Googling. However, if you do have this kit, just follow the simple wiring like this. And as I'm bench testing it to show you it working in this video, I just opted to use some short cables between that control PCB and the antenna switch box. Now with some power applied to the PCB, we can see the selected antenna LED is illuminated. And when turning the control, it will change the selected antenna. And you can also hear the relays could chunk. However, in this little video clip, I did not manage to record the could chunking because my microphone wasn't turned on. Now, as I was sat here twiddling the knob, I had a bit of a brainwave. What if we add a second set of relays, i.e. another four, and control them with an ESP32? And then just design a nice little web UI to remotely control this antenna switch. So I dug out this four-way relay board, which I knew worked directly with the logic pins on the ESP32 module, and just connected them up. The six wires in total here, one is ground, one is five volts, and the other four are the logic pins to control each of the relays. Now with it wired up, it was now time to write some code that will provide me with a nice little web interface. Now for this, I just used an Arduino IDE to create this project. What I wanted to be able to do was have four buttons on the screen, one for each antenna port. It needed to be coded so that only one relay was active at any given time. Now this is an absolute must. The last thing you want is for antenna routings to be completely messed up. I also wanted to be able to rename the buttons so that I could set antenna names instead of it just saying antenna one, antenna two, etc., etc. So the code needed to be able to store these button text variables to the ESP32 memory. Now, for now, the connectivity to my home network would be hard coded by entering the SSID and password of my home Wi Fi network. Changing this to create an ad hoc access point on first ever boot and then dynamically changing the Wi-Fi connection is actually possible. And I actually dabbled and played with that. 
but at this stage, it was really just proof of concept. Now, once I finished the application, I downloaded it to the ESP32 module that we'd already connected to our low level relay boards. Now, if you run this application with the console still running on the Arduino IDE, it would actually tell you what IP address it was assigned from your router. Obviously, you can just log into your router and see what devices are attached and just look for an ESP32 module. So just enter the IP address into a browser and then you're presented with this super simple control panel. Now, as I clicked on each of the antenna buttons, I could hear the relays changing. In fact, if we also look at the relay board attached to the ESP32 module, you can see the activated LED illuminate next to the relay that corresponds to each button. So that's success. That part works. Now, the reason that we need this is that we need a way of switching four ways to send 12 volts to the antenna switch, i.e. 12 volts to each of the relays, but only one at a time. Now, I had also coded this application so that a settings button was available so that we can rename the buttons. So just pressing the top right cog showed me this window where I proceeded to change the names of each button. Once you press save and then go back to the control screen, you can see the button text has now updated. Nice. It's also configured to show the active antenna relay as green and the rest of them will be red. Now it should also remember which antenna port was selected even after a reboot. Now it's time to attach the actual antenna switch to the relay board. The wiring is actually pretty simple. We take a ground from the 12 volt DC source and attach it to the ground pin on the antenna switch connection block. We then take a 12 volt DC feed to the center pin of each of the four relay boards that's attached to the ESP32 module. We then take a further four wires and connect them to the pins labeled as one, two, three, and then four on the antenna switch relay board. You then connect those to the outer pin of the corresponding blue relays. Now this means when a relay is active on the ESP32 relay board, 12 volts is sent to the corresponding RF relay on the antenna switch. Hope that makes sense. Now you might not be able to hear this very well, but you can just about hear the relays changing as I press the antenna buttons on the web base UI. You can also see the relay status LED change on that ESP32 relay board. Essentially, there's actually two relays clicking at the same time. I guess the last thing to do here would be to put the ESP32 module and that relay board, which has those blue relays on it, into a nice box and then feed it with 12 volts without the need of a computer or USB cable. But just consider this, the ESP32 module requires five volts. So if you make this yourself, then you will need a little step down module to provide five volts for the ESP32 module from that incoming 12 volts. Now, once the box arrives that I ordered, I may share more details on this if you wanna see a completed build, but I've provided enough information so that you can go and build your own. Now, if you wanna grab one of these antenna switches with the regular wired control panel, then I'll link it below. If you want to check out the code for the ESP32 module, then I'll upload that to my GitHub page so that you can go ahead and download it for free and give it a try yourself. Of course, I'm not gonna have time to provide support for it, so you're gonna to have to do your own research if you come across problems. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it inspires you to have a little tinker with programming, even though this is just a basic antenna switch. Until the next video, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.